So, they found it again, have they? I thought we'd taken care of it. The uh, forces of evil are persistent, sir. I'm getting too old for this. Who have we got lined up to deal with this problem? Uh, Murphy, sir. Oh, no, not Murphy. Afraid so, sir. What about Spade or Marlowe? Uh, dead, sir. Isn't there anyone else? Sorry, sir, he's next on the list. Well, I suppose we'll have to make do. Knowing Murphy, he's going to need help. A lot of help. I'll check the archives and get back to you, sir. News of the day. As the Second World War enters its final days, Allied forces are on the march. The troops of the Western Alliance are occupied with the dangerous duty of ferreting out the remaining pockets of Nazi resistance. The storming of Berlin has crushed the heart of German opposition and sent remnants of the Fuhrer's troops scurrying into the dark reaches of the Black Forest. The Germans have vowed to fight to the last man in their quest for world domination. But their days are numbered, with Adolf Hitler dead and the once dreaded SS disbanded. The Allies have exposed the workings of the Nazi war machine and found it festering with ancient blood cults, whose rituals and ceremonies are too astonishing and barbaric to detail. Allied forces will not rest until the last cult member has been revealed and captured. No pestilence has ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal, the redness and horror of blood. Moonlight, New San Francisco sparkles like a chunk of cubic zirconium, an island of hollow beauty surrounded by a red sea of radiation. Five million souls drowning in gamma rays. Some lucky people have a natural immunity to genetic mutation caused by the radiation. I'm one of them. Most of them live in the new city, but I don't. I live among the unlucky souls, the mutants and the destitute and the wreckage of old San Francisco. My name's Tex Murphy. I'm a private detective. Or at least I used to be. Since my marriage hit the rocks, I haven't done much of anything. I went out tonight for the first time in a week, but all I ended up doing was spending the last of my money on a bottle of cheap bourbon. Now it's past midnight, and I'm staring out of the window of my office on the second floor of the Ritz Hotel. Just like me, the Ritz used to be something. Now it's just another grimy building in a rundown part of town. And I'm almost out of bourbon. My God, Murphy, you look like hell. Really hit bottom, didn't you? <laughs> oh, I usually don't look this bad. I forgot to take my Geritol this morning. 
So, you want a drink? I saved my first one to have with you. No, thanks. I've been dry for eight years now. Yep, one morning I just looked in the mirror and decided I needed to make a few lifestyle changes. Quit smoking, quit drinking. Now I'm getting out of the business. Yep, I'm going to move to the tropics and retire in a nice secluded island with a tribe of beautiful young women. You're getting out of the business? I guess that means the end of the world must be around the corner because you are the detective. I can't imagine you doing anything else, especially not running around an island with a bunch of nubile women in a loincloth. No, I can imagine it. I've been thinking about it for years now. Yeah. You know how it is. Lonely. Underappreciated. Dangerous. I haven't had a decent night's sleep in 38 years. I tell you, I'm working on a case right now, and that's going to be my last one. Well, oh. enough about me. How about you, Tex? How's life treating you? Bad as it looks? <laughs> well, it depends. What day is it anyway today? Saturday? Well, Saturdays aren't too bad. It's normally Thursday by the time I get really suicidal. So what is it you wanted? Just come by to sprinkle a little salt into the uh, open wounds of my pathetic life? No, 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 Tex, you got me all wrong. <laughs> no, just because you turned me in and got me suspended and humiliated me in front of my peers. You sold me out. <laughs> but that's all in the past. See, I quit hating you for that weeks ago. Eh, like I said, I'll be leaving soon. And I didn't want to go with any loose ends dangling there to bother me in my golden years. <sighs> <laughs> hey, don't worry about me. When you tossed me out of the agency, it was the best thing that ever happened. Digging through dumpsters and sleeping in abandoned speeders. You helped me learn a great lesson. Because no matter how bad things are, they can always get worse. So what happened to you? I heard you were doing pretty well there for a while. Did I help a job on that Martian memorandum case? What's your problem? You one of those people who can't live with success? Huh? Well, I can live with it. I'm just afraid of commitment. Now you tell me something. Why wouldn't you talk to me 15 years ago? I was a stupid kid back then. Could have tried to understand why I told the ethics board what I did. I mean, I understand now that I was out of line and I made a mistake, but why'd you cut me off like that? Because apparently you never learned the first rule of a P.I. And never, ever, betray your friends. Now, friendship goes beyond blood and race and politics. You gotta find out who your friends are, then you hold on to them. They're a precious commodity to people like me and you. Now listen, before I go, I came here with a warning. I heard your name mentioned in connection with a case that I'm working on, and you stay out of it. If you don't, somebody's gonna find you floating in the bay with a hole in your head. And I don't need any more strain on my conscience. You know, frankly, I'm pretty insulted. Because I'm a pretty damn good detective. And I can take care of myself, thank you. No! Just remember what I said, Tex. Got no idea what kind of people we're dealing with here. Just keep out of my way. I'll send you a postcard. So last night, after 15 years, the Colonel walks into my office. Made me take a good hard look at myself. Maybe I have hit bottom, and maybe I do look like hell. Lord knows the only exercise I've had lately is tipping the bottle and flipping cards into my hat. I gotta find some work. Contrary to what the Colonel might think, I'm as good a detective as he ever was. Now I just gotta prove it. I'm gonna scare up a job today, even if it means finding somebody's lost puppy.
Oh boy, mail. Pre-approved electronic shop credit card application addressed to the previous occupant. Just needs to be signed, stamped, and mailed. Great-great-grandpa Murphy made it through the Depression by teaching cha-cha lessons to rich older women. He made thousands before the authorities found out he had no formal training. My gun. I love it so much! Old trusty sidearm. Been with me since the beginning. You want some of this, huh? Bam, bam! Hey, bam, bam, bam! Bam! Bam, bam! Bam! And you! Hey! Hey, Sonny, can you help me out? My girlfriend threw my gun out of the window. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, just pick it up and, uh... Hey, don't... Don't point that thing up here. That's not a toy, you know! Oh, my hell. No matter how bad things got, I always had my gun. Now I've lost that, too. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those days. The office was actually a dance studio before I moved in, and Latin dancing is a Murphy family tradition. That hutch holds a life's worth of knickknacks, patty wax, and the world's largest piece of elbow macaroni. Crimelink computer is the only valuable piece of equipment left in the office. By entering suspect information like height, weight, and hair color, I can access the suspect's personal files. This one really isn't art, it's a placemat from Taco Bob's. This piece of art is called Two Whales on a Bender. Spent weeks earning this baby. Best 20 bucks I ever spent. The UI of U was the only place that would accept me. Half the course credit was earned by locating the university. Oh great. Another incoming message that won't print out. If I don't get a new fax machine, I'll be out of business. Things look pretty slow on the street today. Hip-hop English keeps me up on all the slang kids are using today. This cabinet is where my old successes go to die. Ah, uh, nothing here but nostalgia. My old reliable... This here is my favorite desk drawer. As usual, it's a mess. Most of these desk drawers haven't been used for so long, I'm afraid to open them. As usual, it's a mess. As usual, it's a mess. Nothing in here but a stamp. Nothing in here but a stamp.
Nothing in here but a pen. This is probably the only writing utensil that works in the whole office. My phonograph's an old family heirloom. I love to play the classics. Cool and the Gang, Peaches and Herb. Ah, Sylvia, my ex-wife. Whenever I think things can't get any worse, I think about her and how she totally screwed up my life. She's a woman who loves a man, any man, any time. I'll never forget the day I came home early and caught her with the upholstery man. Oh, there you are. I just got done with the chair. I'll be sending the bill to your husband. Oh, Rudy. Let's not think about my husband right now. I was, I was watching you upholster and you're so big and strong. Do you really think so? Well, yes. God, I've only known you for ten minutes and I feel like I've known you forever. Oh, yes, look. And look at this muscle. Oh. The way you hold me, Tex, Tex never held me like this. <clears throat> oh, kiss me, Rudy, and set my lips on fire. Okay. Oh, Tex, honey! I wasn't expecting you home so soon. Well, duh! Obviously! Now I know why the Rota Rooter man keeps calling and asking whether we need our plumbing checked. Well, I gotta admit, those chairs look pretty good. Uh, thanks. Listen, how about I don't charge you on the labor and we call it even? Fair enough. But from here on out, Rudy, customer servicing doesn't include my wife. See, honey? I saved you some money again. Aren't you happy? I married her for better or worse. Unfortunately, it never got any better. I need to run this thing down to the auto post box on the street. That's the door to the street. The air outside feels thick, like I'm breathing through a pair of dirty gym socks. It's a high radiation day. Most everyone will be staying inside, but I need to hunt for some work. I always like to start the day with a traditional P.I. breakfast. Mmm, <coughs> that hits the spot. Chelsea runs a first-rate newsstand. Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. Surprisingly, the auto post box has no graffiti on it. Maybe people around here are finally starting to respect our government and its fine agencies. Postal service has gotten much faster since the stamp price went to $10. I should get my credit card back tomorrow morning.
brand new electronic shop outlet. No pun intended. I won't be able to get inside the electronic shop until I get a membership card. These posters somehow survived the big war. They're better reminders of the past glory of this great city. On the top floor of this place is where I hang my hat. It's not much, but it's better than... Well, it's not much. Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. Rusty the Clown's novelty shop. Closed down a few months ago after Rusty mysteriously disappeared. The police suspect foul play, but I think he probably just choked to death on his own bad jokes. Rook Garner runs this pawn shop. He's a crusty old World War III vet with a face like a raisin and a tongue like a butcher's cleaver. What do you want, Miffy? Fine. How you doing, Rook? I'm not in the mood for small talk. Well then, by all means, let's discuss a serious topic. A breaking, entering, and robbery serious enough for you, Murphy? Last night, someone broke into my pawn shop. I don't usually have anything of great value, but yesterday, I gave out a fair amount of cash for an extremely valuable diamond bracelet. How much is a fair amount of cash? In this case, $8,000. Boy, that's a lot of clams, Rook. Don't you think I know that? The bracelet was pawned by a young girl named Emma Nimpton. She said she hated to hawk a family heirloom, but had no choice. She said she would reclaim the bracelet in a month. Well, since the bracelet was worth ten times the 8000 I loaned her, it was a good deal for me. Did you get any other information from this Emma Nimpton? She left a phone number. I called her this morning, but the line is disconnected. So do you have any leads on recovering the bracelet? No, the police are a waste of time, and I can't afford to hire a decent P.I. I guess this means you don't consider me good enough to help track down the bracelet? I'd appreciate your help. I'm not a rich man, but if you find the bracelet, I'll owe you a few favors. Which could come in handy. Get back here and I'll show you where they broke in. Rook takes me out back and shows me where the burglar broke in. The back window is busted out and the latch is ripped. It's a sloppy job. As I start my investigation, I'm looking for information to enter into my crime link computer back at the office. One thing's for sure, Emma Nimpton won't be one of the suspect's names. Every P.I. worth his salt knows that's not my name spelled backwards. The baby rum wrapper looks like it was left recently. Yep, still warm. I wonder what all these garbage cans are doing around here. Maybe Rook is running a low-rent hostel. A shard of glass must have come from that broken window. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Looks like whoever broke into Rook's window left one of his hairs behind. Apparently our burglar is a carrot top. These disgusting piles of trash remind me of Aunt Betty's annual yard sales. It's like a shoe print is outlined in that sticky pool of something resembling chocolate. Footprints about a size 14. Hmm, it's one of those basketballs they used to give away at Weenie World. This is where graffiti novices come to practice. After honing their skills, they move on to places where people actually care if you spray paint their walls. 
10 seconds left. Down by one. Murphy has the ball. He fakes. He drives. It's a 360. He's fouled. Well, that steep staircase looked really hard to climb. Hey, this door's just painted on. Hey, this door's just painted on. These disgusting piles of trash remind me of Aunt Betty's annual yard sales. Whoa! This antique boombox worked. I bet it'd only play the Bee Gees. Oh man! This dumpster smells like 20-year-old mayonnaise and I ought to know. Well, I'll be darned. Except for the filth and stench, the interior isn't much different than the average studio apartment. In fact, it's nicely furnished. Someone's been living here, and I wonder if he saw anything. This old relic probably hasn't worked in years. Hey, there are batteries in here. I wonder if these still work. Mmm, tingly tongue. Still got juice. This rookety wooden fence keeps Rook's Pawn Shop and the Slice of Heaven Pizza Parlor from collapsing into each other. All hell has broken loose since the government stopped requiring products to display those give a hoot don't pollute symbols. I heard this newspaper box got destroyed right after Chelsea opened her newsstand. Coincidence? The Golden Gate Hotel was once known as the Waldorf of the Pacific. Its halls are still sturdy, and the walls have worn well. But there's nobody living inside. Rusty the Clown. Yeah, looks like someone's locked the door. The Acme Warehouse is the former Snow White Dry Cleaning Building. Nobody's used this place in a while. Louis Laments runs the Brew and Stew, which is a local hangout. Well, this is a section of the Bay City Mirror. It's a weekly newsletter that covers local goings-on written by mutants for mutants. I'd subscribe if they had a comics page.
Chelsea's a hot little number. I hear she's a mutant, but it doesn't show. The only weird thing about her is she won't go out with me. Chelsea Bando's the kind that could hold her own with anyone, but she has a way of turning my knees to jelly. She's a mutant, just like everyone else in this part of town, but she's a real beauty. Well, hello, stranger. Chelsea, you're breaking my heart. Why? Because I've got a steady job? No, it's just you're so beautiful it makes me ache. Let me buy you a drink and I'll tell you where it hurts. Gee, Tex, you know, that kind of talk could get you into trouble. But I don't drink with customers. I'd be happy to throw in a chili dog with that drink. Well, an offer like that, oh, that's hard to refuse. But no thanks. So, is there something I can do for you? Rook acts like a tough guy, but he's a softie. Just don't tell him that to his face. Oh, you know me, Tex. I'm just making ends meet. I love Louie, but his friendliness doesn't fool me. He's a sharp one. He knows everything that's going on in this neighborhood. Franny's a live wire. Either she or Sal is going to do time for killing the other one. I have never seen a couple fight like they do. Sal's a handful. I, he's a nice guy, but I don't know, I feel kind of naked when he gives me the eye. Luckily, Ardo seems to like me. I mean, if I were on his bad side, I'd be tempted to relocate. He could crush a Subaru with one hand. Wish I could help you there, Tex. Oh, I remember Rusty. He had a kid show on TV when I was young. Oh, I hated the show. That clown makeup oh, always scared me. Sorry, I haven't heard anything about that. Yeah, you know, I remember Rook told me about the burglary. You know, I remember a stranger hanging around the past couple of days. It might be a dead end, but I seem to remember that the guy had these bright green eyes and a tattoo of an anchor on his arm. The crusade is big. I mean, much bigger than most people know. They have operatives all over, and then these huge sections of the norm population are joining. Well, they say it's a religion, but then they encourage the members to be violent and prejudiced towards others. Wish I could help you there, Tex. Yeah, you know, I remember... I haven't seen Mac Malden since the Martian Memorandum case. I remember him as a surly, incompetent, fat-nosed cop. As I step into his office, I can see he's changed. His nose is even bigger. Well, if it isn't Tex Murphy... I figured you'd be dead by now. I could say the same about you. When's the last time you had your cholesterol checked? Still the wise guy, eh, Murphy? It was great to see you. Now get lost! Oh, come on. Remember the Martian Memorandum case? Hey, we made a swell team. Yeah, those were the days. I don't get cases like that anymore. Things are harder now. The mayor's office is all over me again. You heard about the string of pawn shop robberies? We have no suspects, and I'm catching the heat for it. So you and your crack team of detectives have no leads? Of course we have leads, you pots. We know he's a norm, Caucasian, 
and has AB negative blood. That narrows down our list of suspects to about a million. Now get out of my hair. I got work to do. Oh, looks like Mr. Bum is home for the evening. Yeah, what do you want? Is this your, uh, permanent address? Actually, I have a summer home in Vale. But this spot keeps me in touch with the common people. Oh, what intriguing stories you winos tell. I don't drink spirits, punk. Nothing but pure, creamy chocolate. Now get lost! Francesca Lucido makes the... Louis Laments runs the Brew and Stew, which is a local hangout. Man, there are signs of radioactivity everywhere. Louis Laments runs the... Brew and Stew is run by Louis Laments, a bloated mutant with a heart bigger than his waistline. Everyone comes to Louis's cafe. So does all the street talk. If something's going on, Louis knows about it. What can I do for you, Mife? Nothing for me, Louis. I just dropped by to chat. Okay. What's on your mind? Well, Louis, you're the grapevine around here. Anything interesting going on? Well, I've been hearing a lot about this crusade for genetic purity movement. It's got a lot of tension stirred up between mutants and norms. Mutants have been protesting downtown and there's been some violence. Rooks and ornery old cuss. But me and him are old buddies. We fought in the big war together. He's one person you can trust in these troubled times. Chelsea acts tough. But she has to be with all the scum around. And she's as smart as she is pretty. She knows a lot of what goes on in the shadows of this city. Yeah, things are a little slow, but I'm getting by. Having to lay off some of my kitchen help hurt my pride more than anything. Granny the Fireball. She and Sal opened the pizza place seven or eight years ago, and they've been fighting ever since. Sal's a big guy with an appetite for food, wine, and women. He comes by here most every day, for lunch. Fardo comes in now and again. Usually orders a couple of steaks and a chocolate milk. His temper's as short as he is tall. And he's only got one oar in the water. A bad combination. Sorry, Mife. Can't help you there. 
He was a strange one. He had a show on TV for a while. Got pretty popular. Then he quit the show and went into business. He opened up a shop right up the street from here. I guess he wasn't a very good businessman. The shop went out of business within a couple of months. Then Rusty just disappeared. I heard he'd made some enemies in the novelty trade. Rook told me about the bracelet, but I don't know anything more about it. Rook's been robbed before, but he's never had anything really valuable taken. This is going to set Rook back for a while. Too bad the cops have turned a blind eye. Rook's been robbed ever since the crusade started up. The relations between norms and mutants has gone to pot. I've had rocks thrown through my windows, graffiti sprayed on the bricks outside. There's not much I can do, though. He's one of the few norms besides you who's eaten here. Seems like a typical cop. A little dim, and not too concerned about what happens in the mutant sections of town. You want to try a slice of my chocolate pie? I can get you a piece to go if you like. Oh, looks like Mr. Bum is home for the evening. Oh no, not you again. Look, I'll warn you right now, I'm almost out of chocolate syrup and I'm not in a good mood. You know, I just might have something that would improve your ugly mood. Is that so? Well, what? Food of the gods, ask away. Brooke, he leaves me alone. Can't ask for more than that. I think Jill, she used to fancy me until she found out my only true love was chocolate. Damn near broke her heart. Nice guy, good cook. Every national feed of bum day, he brings me one of his award-winning chocolate pies. Ugh. I don't have much to do with her. They don't serve anything with chocolate in it at the pizza joint. The only time I ever see Sal is when he gets drunk and comes by to pick a fight. Then I kick his butt and send him on his way. That big goon. He used to hassle me until I shared a quart of chocolate syrup with him. Now he lets me alone. Wish I could help. Oh, don't know a thing about it. Sorry, can't help you with that. I stay out of politics, especially bad politics. I saw someone prowling around the back of the pawn shop last night. It was so dark, I didn't get a good look at him, but I could tell he was huge. Probably 6'3 or 6'4, about 300 pounds. Wish I could help. Like Rook always says, you can cut corners here and there, but there's nothing like a quality garbage can. Hmm. Looks like a key of some kind.
Rusty the Clown's Novelty Shop. Closed down a few months ago after Rusty mysteriously disappeared. The police suspect foul play, but I think he probably just choked to death on his own bad jokes. Looks like a welcome mat, but when it's on the doorstep of a novelty shop, you can never be too careful. Whoa, a key. Rusty the Clown's Novelty. Rusty the Hmm, it's all locked up. The only way I'm gonna get inside is by using my innate cleverness or ingenuity, or maybe a key. <laughs> Just a couple of empty old packing boxes. Hmm. Rusty, the clown from hell. No wonder this place went under. Probably scared off all this business. Looks like some kind of in-house television. Hi kids, it's me, Inspector Burns. And as we all know, fire can be our friend, but fire can be our foe. So many times, fires start so carelessly. And what can fires do? Fires burn you. Never, never light matches. No, no, no. Fire is dangerous. Fire made me look like this. Do you want to look like me? No, no, no. Don't look like Inspector Burns. Don't play with matches. Uh, Inspector Burns. I always thought he was a freak, but the kids love him. So does Zardo. Cool. Plastic dark crossbow. It'll make a nice addition to my non-violent weapon collection. Apparently Rusty was very fond of empty cardboard boxes. It's a rusty clown life-size doll. Wow, it's a dead ringer for, oh, no pun intended. Apparently Rusty looks like my fourth grade teacher. Well, this must be Mr. Grimm. He's a reaper. Oh, this is a scary mask. Why, it's Mr. Sloppy Lasagna Eater. I'll bet this is a real popular mask. Wow, the limited edition Daryl Hannah wig and mannequin set. Whoa! For a second there, I thought someone had decapitated Inspector Burns and left his head on the floor. What a great mask. Well, I have no idea what I'd ever do with a stacking ring, but what the heck. These weapons are all made of plastic. All bark and no bite. They're completely useless. These weapons are... This wig probably sells well during the Bay Area Yodeling Festival. A mask of the king? That's blasphemy! This wig must be quite popular with shy people. Whoa, this wig would even make someone like me look glamorous. Hmm. Maybe this key fits in that employee's only door. If I can unlock this door, I may be able to go where only clowns have gone before.
Rusty says, clean up the mess. Sounds like Rusty ran a pretty tight ship. A plastic suction dart can be formidable ammo in the hands of an expert like myself. Posters in here tell you more than you'd ever care to know about film processing. Why in the world would Rusty keep a barrel of toxic acid? Oh lordy. Well this is where Rusty ended up. What a way to go. I'm willing to bet he didn't crawl in here on his own. Someone murdered him. Posters in here tell you more than... The sink must have been used for developing photos. Not much use for it now since all the developing equipment's gone. The sink must have been used for developing photos. Not much use for it now since all the developing equipment's gone. A balloon strategically located near the water faucet. Looks like Rusty didn't go down without a fight. Portable helium. Just undo the knot and breathe deeply. Hi, Tex. How's the investigation going? Is there anything I can do to help? Sorry, I haven't heard anything about that. Oh, yeah, I know Beak. If you want to talk to him, you might try hanging out around Coit Tower.
My trusty 31 lightning bolt speeder. I still regret not getting the sunroof option. What can I do for you, Tex? That great old landmark, the Coit Tower, rises high above the skyline. I walk up the steps to Coit Tower and spot a small figure lurking in the shadows. In the half-light, I can see only the person's profile, but it's definitely Beak. As I walk towards him, he glances around, then approaches me warily, like a vegetarian sizing up a pot pie. What are you staring at? You must be Beak Norris. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's me. But I ain't smelled you before. Who are you? My name's Tex Murphy. I'm a P.I. and I'm trying to solve a burglary. I don't like P.I.s. You're always nosing into everyone's business. Maybe I've got something here in my coat you could really use. Hey, you got some peanuts, don't you? I smell salty peanuts. I went to the circus last week and put some peanuts in my pocket, but they're all gone now, B. Well, if you ain't got salty peanuts, what have you got to trade for info? Okay, I can use this. My nose has started sagging lately. Makes it hard to breathe. Now, what kind of info are you looking for, hmm? I can't help you there. Chelsea! Hmm, smart girl and a real look at the boot. She's got a cute little nose. I haven't got any info on that. She runs that pizza place with her husband, Sal. I don't know much about her. A true Italian knows, though. He lets his wife run the pizza joint. I don't know what he does. Though I've heard some things about who he does. <laughs> you can tell he drinks a lot by that snores of his. I can't help you there. I know a little about him. Runs a pretty successful P.I. business. I think he's dead. And I'll bet Mick Flam had something to do with it. Word was the two of them were smuggling illegal novelty items from Hong Kong and Rusty Cross Flam. Ever since Rusty disappeared, Flam has had a terrible fear of clowns. Bozophobia. I once saw Flem pretty drunk and he said he had nightmares of Rusty's ghost coming back to haunt him from the grave. He was completely terrified. The bracelet is the bait Mick Flem uses for the pawn shop robberies. 
Rook's pawn shop was robbed by a two-bit crook named Mick Flam. He and his girlfriend have knocked off half a dozen pawn shops over the past month. The girl goes to a pawn shop and hawks a bracelet for a decent amount of cash. Then Flam breaks into the pawn shop and steals the bracelet, along with anything else he finds. Big trouble! It's causing mutant blood to boil, and I don't want to be around when the bullets start flying. Anyone with a hunker like that can't be all bad. Malden's no rocket scientist, but I hear that he's not on the take. I've helped him out a couple of times, so he leaves me alone. McFlam's rap sheet would take a day to read. He's a fat scum, and he's an idiot to boot. That's why he's always getting caught. He's been busted for burglary, mail fraud, arson, you name it. Everyone knows he operates out of the Snow White warehouse, but don't tell him. Oh, I'm nobody. I just try to keep my nose clean and my ear to the ground. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Or was that vice versa? Flem is working out of this warehouse. It looks like he got careless. The door's unlocked. If this is Mick Flem's hangout, he'll probably be back soon. I'd better try and set some sort of trap for him. Yummy! A bottle of turnip schnapps. I'll bet it's got a real kick. Well, this is actually a storage compartment. Looks like it requires a special combination key. Hmm. Locked. I don't think I'll move any of these pallets because they look like big slivers waiting to happen. That old piece of plywood doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. Apparently some fireman dropped off his uniform to be cleaned and uh, forgot to pick it up. This must be the power box for the warehouse. And it's locked. Hmm. Locked. This key must fit a lock around here somewhere. Hopefully this isn't a self-destruct lever. The sound is coming from up on the landing. Looks like the on-off switch controls a pulley hook. It's running back and forth along a track. That hook looks pretty heavy duty. I can't get over how lifelike this doll is. If it didn't have a hook on the back and a battery compartment, I'd swear it was Rusty himself.
The heavy footsteps I hear must be phlegm. Luckily, my rusty trap's all set. I'll need to find a hiding place as close as possible to the pulley control box. When Flem least expects it, I'll throw the pulley lever and bring Rusty back from the dead. This table and the bottle on it aren't dusty like everything else here. Someone's used this recently. Damn, I'm good. This has to be Rook's bracelet. This table and the... Mick ran off without his keys. I'll bet at least one of these will come in handy. Well, this is actually a storage compartment. Hmm. A locked box within a locked box. It must contain something worth having. Hmm. What do we have here? Unless I miss my guess, this is jade. And it's good quality, too. That door leads to the street. I'm telling you, it's impossible. It can't be done. I've tried everything. The prophecy is very clear. We can't go on until this step is completed. Surely your unique skills give you opportunity? My ability has gotten us nowhere. Capricorn got there before me. They're always one step ahead of me. It's like they can read my mind. We can't let them stop us! Maybe we can use your skills on someone else. I've made inquiries. And if he hasn't gotten himself killed, maybe he's just what we need. Murphy. Tex Murphy. I feel better today than I've felt in a long time. Boy, did I stun Rook when I walked in and handed him that bracelet. Okay, so getting the bracelet back doesn't make me detective of the year, but it does stimulate the confidence glands. Maybe I can succeed at this business and turn my career around. But if I'm gonna do that, I better do something about my fax machine. Who knows how many new opportunities I've missed to show the world my greatness.
Oh boy, mail. Ah, my own personal credit card. I'll need this to get in the electronics shop next door. This is the brand new electronic shop outlet. No pun intended. This is the brand new... This electronic shop outlet has just moved into the neighborhood. I've heard that the manager's name is Ham Underwood. Everyone knows they sell overpriced junk, but it is conveniently located. That pudgy computer dweeb really has a battered head. Hi there, how can I help you? Oh, I just dropped by to check out your store here. Well, feel free to browse. Though, since you're a blue card member, you'll have to choose from the blue light special items. Well, what are you looking for? Do you have fax machines? Sure do. In fact, there's one older model in the blue light special box. I tried not to stare, but it threw me off when I saw how cross-eyed Ham Underwood is. I'll have to keep in mind that anything he says is on the left is probably on the right. Hmm, an old 1286 with an ancient super duper Wowzer VGA monitor. This must be the new 10 key laser printer pop-up toaster unit. The fax machine's so outdated, it doesn't even have a brand name. And it's better than nothing. I can't get that while the force field is up. Do you have a fax? Do you as soon as I hook up the new fax machine, a fax prints out. Oh, finally. Maybe this is a real case. The kind you get paid for. A fax addressed to Tex Murphy from the Countess Rainier? Countess Rainier. That name smacks of money. Hopefully she doesn't want to hire me to find her lost poodle. As I land my speeder, I see my dream house, only bigger. The butler is a tall, thin man, about 70. He tells me the Countess is expecting me and shows me into a large, lavishly furnished drawing room. And the Countess Rainier. Please, have a seat. Thank you. You know, I pictured you being, well, older and heavier. No one is born old, Mr. Murphy. Now, shall we discuss our business while we're still young? Oh, by all means. Pardon my interruption. Your services have been recommended to me by a trusted friend who prefers to remain anonymous. Suffice it to say that your unique abilities are what I need right now. Um, which of my unique abilities are you referring to? I'm sure you have many unique abilities. The one I would hire you for is your talent of locating people and things. 
I've been told this talent has made you some friends and many enemies. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Canis, but wasn't it Roy Rogers who once said, you can't please all the people all the time? Save your homespun humor for a more gullible woman. What I'm asking you to do may make you very unpopular with some people. Uh, exactly how unpopular are we talking here? Let me give you some background information, then you can decide for yourself. Some time ago, a family heirloom was stolen from this bungalow. I do keep most of my valuables on my estate in Europe, but on this visit, I brought the piece to show a friend. Within hours of my arrival, I found it stolen, and I have made extensive inquiries trying to retrieve it, but I found out nothing. Well, I'm sure you have more resources, talking about cash, than I do. You should be able to buy all the information you need. What makes you think that I can help you? Oh, I don't. I remembered what my friend had told me about you after I had exhausted every other option. You know, referring to me as your last option could automatically double my fee. I already planned on paying you much more than your usual fee. I'm a wealthy young woman, Mr. Murphy. To give you an idea, the stolen artifact alone is worth more money than you could earn in ten lifetimes. Oh, we'll see about that when I win the clearinghouse sweepstakes. <laughs> How quaint. Let's not waste any more time. I need some work done, and I'll pay you well for it. Well, in my experience, getting paid well is a relative term. Your obsession with money is appalling. Oh, I have any number of appalling traits, but I am a good P.I. Well, if you prove to be as good as you think you are, I'll pay you a $30,000 finder's fee. Well, let me think about it. Okay, I'll do it. In fact, I'll even mow your lawn at no charge. Try to control yourself, Mr. Murphy. <laughs> I'll expect you to focus all of your energies on this job, and the methods you use to retrieve the artifact are of no interest to me. But as more time elapses, the less likely it is that the item will be found, and for that reason, I must require you to find it and to return it to me within one week. And after that, there will be no finder's fee available to you. Do you pay time and a half after 40 hours? <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke. <laughs> I have stated my conditions. As to the artifact itself, it is a beautiful statuette made of crystal and shaped in the form of a bird. It has been in my family for countless generations and, as I said, it is extremely valuable. There are many collectors who would stop at nothing to own it. Whoever stole the statuette would undoubtedly have gone to the black market and offered it to the highest bidder. Hmm, I think I saw that statuette you're talking about. Someone was selling it on the home shopping network. Boy, I had no idea it was so expensive. You make jokes, but you cannot possibly know how rare and valuable the statuette is. And now that you have all the necessary information, we'll end this charming visit. Don't bother contacting me until you have the statuette in your possession. And if you are successful in your search, it could change my opinion of you considerably. My valet will give you a retainer of $1,000 on your way out. Goodbye, Mr. Murphy. I didn't tell the Countess, but I would have done damn near anything for $30,000. Now I've got to find a link to the black market. How hard can it be? Chelsea's a hot little number. Hey, I heard you took care of Rook. Pretty impressive. Well, thanks. Maybe word will get around and scare up some more work for me.
Oh, I'm sure it will. Maybe then you'll have some money and quit mooching off me. Come on, Chelsea, let me savor my success for a while. Okay, but not for too long. I like to keep you humble. Gee, thanks. So, is there something you came to ask me about? He's only been here a few weeks, and I don't know much about him. Sorry, I haven't heard anything about that. Apparently, it's a real hot item. The top commodities dealer in the city is named Franco Franco. He probably either has the statuette or knows who has it. I don't know how you're going to find him, but if you do, be careful. Hey, Murphy, guess what? We got the guy who robbed those pawn shops. Turned himself in. Can you believe it? Get babbling some about a clown coming back from the dead to haunt him. <laughs> well, I'm sure you would have caught him anyway. Knowing that you were on his trail probably drove him over the edge. That butt kissing of yours must be a hard habit to break, eh, Murphy? You must want something. What? Sorry, Murphy. Can't help you with that. Jeez, Tex, you think I know about everything? He's a big time crook. Deals with stolen and illegally imported merchandise, especially Jade. Sorry, Murphy. What else can I help you with, Murphy? That depends on whether you're here to help me or to irritate me. I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. Big time crook. Deals with a lot of uh, smuggled artifacts and the like. He's pretty well connected with the mob and black market here in San Francisco. You know, I subscribe to a trade paper called Jewelry Weekly. In the last issue, it seems to me I saw an advertisement by someone named Franco, who was looking to buy jade. There wasn't anything of interest in the trade paper, so I threw it out. It's probably still in the trash can out back. Whoever uses these garbage cans is either a terrible shot or is saving them for that special piece of trash. I wonder what all these garbage... Like Rook always says, you can... Recyclable paper can. Finally, a glimmer of ecological responsibility. I didn't know Rook cared. This must be the trade paper Rook mentioned.
Being a movie buff, I've heard of the Alhambra Theater, though I heard it was closed down years ago. Sure enough, it's boarded up, but one of the back doors is unlocked. As soon as I step inside, two lugs the size of refrigerators grab me. I tell them that I have something for Mr. Franco and one of them walks off. He comes back a minute later and escorts me into the main theater. A Buster Keaton flick is playing. The place is empty except for a man sitting by himself near the front of the theater. Welcome, Mr. Murphy. Hey, how do you know my name? I have my ways. I've been told you're a private eye. As I'm sure you know, I'm strictly a legitimate businessman. Yeah, you may be legit, but I understand you're pretty jaded. Oh yes, that I am. Speaking of which, did you bring the item? Ah, a lovely specimen. It will make a fine addition to my collection. Now, I will answer one question to the best of my knowledge. There's a statuette in the shape of a bird that recently came onto the market. You know who has it? Hmm, I know the statuette you're referring to. There were several bidders for it, but I believe it ended up in the hands of Eddie Ching. I can say no more about it. There, now I've fulfilled my part of the bargain. Don't contact me again. Unless, of course, you find another fine piece of jade. You know the way out. Do you have a fax? Do you have a fax? Again, eh, Murphy? What can I help you with? Ching's a dangerous customer. He's responsible for half the crime in the city. I'm pretty sure he owns the police commissioner. We've been told to lay off him. That place is home to more major crime figures than any other place on the planet. Eddie Ching lives there on the entire top floor. Looks like no one's home. This is gonna be easier than falling off a horse. This window doesn't want to open up. Maybe if I... Whoa, whoa! Whoa! Ah! When I stop bouncing off the awning two floors below Ching's place, I realize it'll take more than sheer strength to get into the apartment. Luckily, I noticed something that might help as I bounced by. A sticker on Ching's window said, Security System Installed by Underwood Incorporated.
back again, eh? What can I do for you? I understand you installed the security system at the Knickerbocker building. Yeah, I did, but my contract included a clause that I wouldn't talk about the job. Look, I'm a PI. I need some information. I'll keep my mouth shut if you help me out. I've got nothing to say. I keep my nose clean, and I work in a confidential business. I'm sure you can understand. You know, my wallet is so full, it's creating an unsightly bulge on my butt. I get paid well enough for my work. You can take your lousy bribe and get the hell out of my store. Ah, the Blue Knight Special Box. What unexpected treasures does this hold in store? Em doesn't want to talk, but I need some details on the security system at the Knickerbocker. I tell him that Enrique, my pet goldfish, died this morning and that I'm talking crazy. He tells me not to worry about it, then tries his sales pitch on me again. I understand that you and I are in the same line of... moonlighting work? Really? You do security systems too? Well, sometimes. Here, let me see if I can find one of my business cards. Hmm. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I always misplace my business cards, too. What types of security systems have you worked with? Let's see. The last job I had was the laser security system at Big Dick's Casino on Mars. I've heard that's a neat system. <laughs> but it's nothing compared to the one I just put in. I'll have you know that I've beaten every security system ever made. Well, after I installed this system, I tried to beat it, but I couldn't. First, the only possible way to enter the building would be to land on the roof and rappel down. Then, you'd have to cut through the LCD alarm glass. Well, that's not too hard. In fact, I, I sell a laser blade here that would do it. but. Once you're inside, every room is flooded with a net of heat and motion sensing beams that could turn an elephant into a brick of carbon. Believe me, it's burglar proof. Uh, listen, this system is top secret, so uh, let's just keep this between us. The Laser Blade 2000. Worthless except on glass. Hopefully Ham knows what he's talking about. Armed with a chintzy electronic shop laser blade, I land my speeder on the roof of the Knickerbocker. Hoping for the best, I repel down the side and pull out the laser blade. The laser beam cuts through the LCD glass like it was butter. I gingerly crawl through the hole in the window and find myself inside Eddie Ching's library. Either I'm exaggerated or the laser fields aren't turned on. This must be my lucky day. Well, this painting's one of my favorite subjects, languid women. I love fruit so much. I even love pictures of fruit. This aquarium has less algae in it than my water cooler back at the office. Wow, 
Wow, these plants aren't plastic, they're real. Ching must have paid a fortune for these. As a rule, bookcases are great places to keep books. This book seems out of place somehow. There's something different about this book. Just call it P.I.'s Instinct. Aha! I knew it. A key. I haven't seen an actual set of encyclopedias since I was a kid. Laserblade did a nice job cutting through the window. A stone bust. Whoever posed for it didn't win any beauty contests, I'll wager. An extremely handsome mahogany table. Impressive closet door. Hmm, a heavy-duty metal Geiger trap. Looks like it might be sturdy enough to use on the roaches at my office. Clownfish confetti food. Smells like cotton candy. This aquarium has less algae in it than my water cooler back at the office. I had a set of stacking rings just like this one when I was a little P.I. Hmm. Even has a small hole in it, just like the rings I had. Man, fill one of these with water and you can chuck it a mile. Well, that's not gonna work. Well, that's not gonna work. So these are the laser nets Ham was talking about. There's a power box at the far end of the hallway with a button flashing. Maybe if I can hit that button, it'll turn off the laser nets. security system is tough. My brilliant shot didn't turn off the beams, it just popped open the power box. Hmm. Looks like there's a lever that needs to be pulled down. Hopefully my old horseshoe tossing skills haven't left me. I'll need to find something fairly heavy. As soon as the ring hits the lever, the laser net shuts down. Now I should have the run of the apartment. If the statuette's here, Ching probably has it well hidden. Well, even Ching's plants look expensive. 
Oh lord, I hate wedding pictures. They give me terrifying flashbacks. Well, this is your standard light at the end of the tunnel. Mom teaching kids proper baby handling techniques. How tender. Looks like some kind of goose party. Ooh la la, check out that sexy swimwear. It's a fine table. Something tells me the trail to the statuette leads right through this door. I call this painting, Woman About to Win Skinny Dipping Bet. Well, this is your standard light. Her voice is coming from beyond that door. Must be at the front door to the apartment. Antique vase filled with flowers. Oh, don't tell me. A man taking his cat for a walk. Well, this must be the mythical Buckaroo Buddha riding his headless steed, Tumbleweed. Well, that's a handsome oriental dressing screen. I'll tell you what, this guy's got style. Cool tiger. Looks real enough to nip my finger. An extremely dense and heavy Saturnian ball suspended over a gravity pad. This Victorian cabinet's nice, but it's just for show. Looks like it doesn't even open. Why, these paintings are great! Just look at the nudity. I need to visit more museums. An Ultra Safe 8000, huh? Top of the line. I'm not sure what that is, but it's ugly. There is a Geiger in the terrarium. Little bugger's a land piranha. It's illegal even to own one of these. Must be Venus before the big breakup. These marble obelisks look real expensive. These pillars are perfectly cylindrical, and I like that. Whoa, must be party time at Valhalla. Whoa, a six foot long pole with a leather noose. This must be great fun at parties. This door exits the apartment. The voices outside must be security personnel. Real nice door as bathrooms go. Luckily, nature's not calling. The doorway to the hall, which leads back to the library.
Mmm, Geiger Chow. It's got real roast beef flavor and makes its own rich gravy. Well, that's a handsome oriental dressing screen. I'll tell you what, this guy's got style. I don't know what I'll do with a small, ravenous Geiger. Oh well, everybody needs a pet. Looks like a fax. I don't want to be nosy, but maybe I should take a look. Something tells me the truth. Ultra safe eight. Looks like some sort of document. Must be important if it's in the safe. The security card must operate a door or panel somewhere in this apartment. The security card must operate a door or panel in the apartment. This door exits the apartment. Real nice door as bathrooms go. Luckily nature's not calling. Small mirror provides the opportunity to touch up the old hairdo.
The solid steel switch lock requires a key. Sounds like something big moved back in the library when I used Ching's key on the switch lock. I better go take a look. Well, look what's behind the bookcase. A secret room. I love secret rooms. This collection of matching Samsonite crates must have cost Ching a bundle. I guess Ching's vases are just too nice to put flowers in. I swear I have seen this painting before. This one must be the original. Wonder if these barrels are full of some hearty ale. I wish I had time to check them out. This painting sticks out from the wall more than the others do. Well, I'm glad someone had the decency to clean up the smut some people call art. Ching must have money to burn if he's walking around on rugs like this. This must be the Countess Statuette. I guess she wasn't exaggerating when she said how valuable it was. If I try to reach the statuette with those laser beams on, they'll light me up like a Duralog. Crate feels empty. It's light, but it's sturdy. This sign apparently has something to do with the lever. To pull or not to pull? That is the question. To pull or not to pull? If I try to reach the statuette with those laser beams on, they'll light me up like a Duralog. This must be the Countess Statuette. I guess she wasn't exaggerating when she said how valuable it was. Looks like Ching needs to install a better security system. Countess will be glad to get this statuette back, almost as glad as I'll be to take her money. I'll return the statuette to her first thing in the morning.
one tired hombre. I can't wait to... Oh, shoot. I go through all that work to get the statuette out of Ching's place, and I leave it in the damn speeder. And I didn't even roll up the windows. I am such an idiot. Ed feels like it's been pounded with a lead pipe. I guess it wasn't a bad dream after all. I wonder how I got here to my office. All I remember is flying pipe and stars. Damn it! After all the trouble I went to to get that stupid statuette, someone just walks up and takes it like candy from a baby. And my wallet's gone too. I hope somebody on the street saw me get jumped. I've got 29,000 reasons to get that crystal bird back. Hopefully I haven't used my tube of miracle facial cream. It should help reduce the swelling and make me look almost human again. What's going on, Tex? Wish I could help you there, Tex. <laughs> Sorry, Tex, I, I didn't see a thing. You know, I'll let you know if I hear anything. Ask away. Wish I could help. What can I get you? Freddy told me you got whacked. I haven't heard any word on the street about who would have done it. He's some billionaire. I think he runs some kind of operation on Mars or the moon. Oh, Tex, why can't all the men be like you? What do you mean, uh, broke, stubbly, and undependable? Listen, Tex, you are a dream compared to that pig husband of mine. Sal's gone too far this time, and I've got to do something about him. It's humiliating the way he's been flaunting his latest affair with some floozy. If I had some hard proof he's been sleeping around, I could finally divorce him and get some money from him. Well, I can't imagine why Sal would run around on you. I mean, you're so hot. Oh, you are such a sweetie. <laughs> Listen. I'll make you a little proposition. 
Oh, I know what you're thinking, you naughty boy. <laughs> we'll discuss that later. I saw you get jumped last night. Sal told me to keep quiet and that telling you would put my life in danger. But I'm willing to talk if you'll give me some proof that Sal is having an affair. Then I could divorce him and get some of the money he's been hiding away all these years. You drive a hard bargain, Francesca. But I need a lead on my case, so I'll see what I can dig up on Sal. I don't know anything about the girl Sal is seeing. I've gone through his things, but haven't been able to find anything except for this note. I think it's meant to be a coded message. <laughs> I'm sorry I don't have anything more for you to work with. Let me know when you've got something. Nothing in here worth taking. Too bad you don't like fresh brains, mate. Hot off the grill. As a matter of fact, he just left. You'd probably be interested to know that he tore up a note and left it in the trash. Louis tells me he just took the garbage and dumped it in the trash can just outside the brewing stew. These must be the note scraps Louis told me about.
Ardo Newpop is a gigantic goon who works at the front desk at the Golden Gate Motel. Ardo's no rocket scientist. In fact, he probably doesn't even know what a rocket scientist is. Anything good on the tube today? Uh-huh. I'm watching the Captain Wallaby show, and he's so funny. Captain Wallaby, your favorite show? It's my third favorite show. My favorite is the Inspector Burns Fire Safety Show. Why is that your favorite show? Because fire safety is very important, and I want to grow up to be just like Inspector Burns. Yeah, old Burnsy's the best. You know, we always play a little game called 20 Questions. You want to play? Okay. I can answer some questions, but first I have to put on my fire hat because Inspector Burns' fire safety show is going to be on pretty soon. I don't know what that is. I never heard nothing about that. I don't. I don't know what that I know I don't know what that She's the lady who makes the best pizza. I eat at her pizza place all the time because I love it. He's a nice guy and I like to eat there because there's a TV. Ooh, Chelsea is pretty cool. Cause she's got good magazines and stuff. That's where I bought my Inspector Burns Fire Safety Manual. I went to his pawn shop cause I thought he would have Inspector Burns action figures, but he didn't and I got mad at him so he probably don't like me. I just want to be like my hero Inspector Burns cause fire safety is very important. I used to watch his TV show, and it was pretty good, but then it stopped. And then he opened a store down the street, and I used to go there and buy stuff, but then it closed. I heard... I heard about that, but I don't know what a crusade is. I don't know what that is. I never heard nothing about that. I don't know what that is. This guy comes up to me and says he don't like you hanging around here. So he gives me a bunch of money and says he'll pay me more if I keep you out of here until he goes away. Ardo's not gonna let me into those rooms at the hotel. But I've got that Inspector Burns costume. Maybe I'll try it on him next time I go in. Now I've got an Inspector Burns disguise that would fool his own mother. It certainly ought to do the trick on a goofball like Ardo. It's my hero, Inspector Burns! And you must be Fire Ranger Ardo, my biggest fan in the entire world! Yes, sir, Inspector Burns. You must have got the letter I sent you. Why, yes, Ardo. I was deeply touched when I read your letter. But now I can't seem to remember a single word of it. That's okay. I know you're pretty busy. I wanted you to inspect this hotel for fire safety. I followed all your fire safety tips.
Well, okay. I can see this means a lot to you. You're a good kid, so I'll just take a look around. All right. I'll open the doors, Inspector Burns. After a few minutes, I find the door to the Regency Escort Service Hotel Suite. The door's locked, but there's a security panel on the wall beside it. Looks like it requires a password. So this is the Regency Escort Service Love Suite. Now that I'm in, I'll need to find something to prove that Sal's been a frequent customer. Plastic plants, as always, add that special touch to a room. A rose bush by a fence. Pretty exciting stuff. I'm starting to think this painting's following me around. Plastic plants is all. A list of names. All female. Looks like Sal's a regular here at the Love Suite. Looks like a piece of bright shiny foil. Must be from a bottle of champagne. I'd call this one, Two Girls Bothered by Ants on a Picnic. This must be titled, Mishap on the High Seas. Nice, boring, but nice. A twisty board game. I used to play this as a kid. I wonder what the escort girls do with it. Man now wishing he hadn't gotten drunk and challenged the other guy to a duel for insulting Rosie, the toothless wench with a heart of gold. A book about the history of the Golden Gate Hotel. Looks fascinating. Nice cathedral. Girls looking for contact lens. Plastic plants is all. This appears to be a very poor copy of Monet's Drowning Frogs. Ah, French doors with American knobs. Lavish, yet practical. Looks like someone left their shorts in the hot tub. I think I'll leave them right where they are. Oh, yuck. The towel smells like mildew and fine hops. Yeah, looks like a couple of objects have fallen into the drain. With that screwdriver, I could undo the screws on this drain cover and get that roll of film. You try scrubbing it out, you try soaking it out, but Sal's still got that ring around the collar. Oh, there's nothing like a fluffy, downy-scented towel. Beer cans! No, oh, they're empty. Oh, sick, a yucky band-aid. Well, I guess one of the escort girls left her bikini top. This face looks like it was mounted here to hold flowers or something.
Uh, frilly panties. I hope they aren't Sal's. The nightstands balance the bed nicely. I love symmetry. The bed looks deluxe. Firm, but not too firm. Looks like a nice vacation spot. My Uncle Stan used to wear a tie with that same pattern on it. You know, suddenly, I'm hungry for a fruit cup. Looks like the upper left drawer is locked. I'll bet I could open it if I had something to pick the lock. A Gideon's Bible, it figures. Everything points to Sal being an aspiring televangelist. Too bad there's no film in it. There's no dust on it, though. Must have been used recently. Twelve cents. Some people would take this change, but not me. Cash, maybe, but not change. I love finding unlocked drawers. The nightstands balance the bed nicely. I love symmetry. Oh, it's last month's Playbub magazine. Looks like it's stuck inside the drawer. Champagne glasses end up in the weirdest places. Looks like a set of clothes. Hopefully this isn't Sal's negligee. Colors all wrong for him. Someone's dropped a cork into this mounted vase. The opening's too narrow to get my hand in. I'd break it, but it looks like it's made out of ceranide, that new unbreakable plastic. The cork looks like a typical champagne cork with some wire mesh on it. Hmm, wire mesh. Even chlorinated water looks better in a champagne glass. As I fill up the mounted vase, the champagne cork flows to the top. I'm just gonna reach in and pick it up. I can just get this piece of wire. There we go.
Oh, it's a shoelace. I hope it hasn't been used inappropriately. Passion's Breath Room Deodorizer. Mm, it smells terrible, but it's got a magnet on it. And magnets can be handy. Looks like a roll of film down there. I believe it's a roll of nutty pictures. Do you have fax machines? Sure do. In fact, there's one older model in the blue light special box. I tried not to stare, but it threw me off when I saw how cross-eyed Ham Underwood is. I'll have to keep in mind that anything he says is on the left is probably on the right. Well, it's the Photomatic Plus Film Developing Kit. How convenient. So happy. Just you're back. <laughs> Did you get the evidence I need?
I think I might. Let me look inside my overcoat. Oh, excellent! This will do the job nicely. <laughs> I'll answer all your questions now. I was up late, having some espresso, then I saw you get jumped. The guy who hit you was real small, maybe a 5'6", 130 pounds. I didn't see his face. He took your package you were carrying, then ran off. It looked like a professional hit, but he wasn't trying to kill you. Believe me, if he wanted to, he could have. After the first guy took off, I saw another guy come running down from your office. He bent over you and went through your car. Then he ran off too. I recognized the second guy. He was a mutant named Pug. In fact, I remember seeing him hanging around your office for the past few days. Anyway, I went over to make sure you were okay. Sal showed up a few minutes later and I made him carry you up to your office. That's all I know. Pug is ugly as sin and smells like he sleeps in a latrine. On and off for the past week or so, I've seen him keeping an eye on your office. Can't help you, Tex. So Sorry. Ask me about something else. Can't help you, Tex. Me and Sal got married too young, and it's been up and down ever since. I've had enough of his drinking and the womanizing, and I divorce him in a second, but he's got a couple of buddies who are top lawyers. If I had some hard evidence of his screwing around, I could divorce him and get a decent settlement. Well, I was hoping you'd get around to asking about me. I'm just a lonely, hot-blooded woman who needs the love of a good, strong man. How can I help you, Tex? anything about that. Hiya, Murphy! Well, you see my new nose! I'm so excited! Mmm! I'm gonna look and feel like a new man! Congratulations. Now you'll have to carry a stick around to keep the women off you. Oh, come on, Mavie. Quit finding me. What do you need? Well, Pug and I used to hang out sometimes. But I haven't seen him for a while. I heard he's gotten a job of some kind. He doesn't work very often and he usually sleeps in a box down by the Snow White warehouse. Following Beak's instructions, I hang around the warehouse. Not long after, a gust of wind carries a horrible stench into my nasal passages. I turn and see a shadowy figure waddle into the alley. The way you look at me, it makes me nervous. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong, Pug. I'm here for a friendly chat. You mean, you're not here to hurt me? <laughs> now, why would I want to pound on you, little buddy? Oh. No reason. I guess I thought you were someone else. I must be going now. Listen, I brought my gun. I don't fire as many warning shots as I used to. This talk of guns has frightened me. I think I've soiled myself. You know, I don't care what you think. Because right this second you've got one foot in the grave and the other's on a big fat banana peel. Yes, and what the right do I have to think? You despise me, don't you? Please don't kill me. Usually I wouldn't think twice about punching out a two-bit crook like you. But you just get my knuckles all grimy. Why are you treating me like I'm some kind of criminal? 
Because I can't justify treating you like a lady. You're a cynical person, if you'll forgive my saying so. Who, me? Cynical? What a load of crap. Now give me my wallet before I break you in half. Here's your wallet. You will see I have spent very little of your money. Tell me, how did you find me? Well, you're pretty sneaky, but someone saw you rob me. They also said you were tailing me. I was hired to follow you. I provide people with information through ways of my own. <laughs> people actually hire you? <laughs> Who's the sap that had you following me? I was hired by an old P.I. who called himself the Colonel. He paid me to follow you and report back on everyone I saw you talk to. He also wanted me to tell him if I saw you with a little statue of a bird. He told me very little else, though he said that he had to find out if you could be trusted. There, I have told you everything I know. Now let me go, and I shall not bother you again. The Colonel was my mentor in the detective biz. When I was a young, idealistic crime fighter, I didn't understand some of the Colonel's unethical PI methods. I reported the Colonel to the PI licensing board and his license was temporarily revoked. In the years since, I've come to understand and even occasionally use the Colonel's questionable methods, but we've never made up. I haven't seen the Colonel's office since we fell out 15 years ago. From the look of the exterior, the Colonel's kept it up nicely. I knock on the door and it swings open. The place is trashed. Uh, oh, I guess I'm gonna have to put off that trip to the Caribbean. <coughs> Maybe permanently. My God, what happened? Who did this to you? A chameleon. Some kind of shapeshifter. I swear he's the devil himself. What did he want? Why did he attack you? Oh, he thought I had it. When he found out I didn't, he tried to torture me and to tell him where it was. Yeah, he got impatient, stuck a knife in my chest. I must have passed out. I ain't enough sleep last night. Well, what was he looking for? I the winter chip. Cult wants it. They're planning a doomsday party. They're afraid whoever's got the chip might stop them. You're gonna have to find it and get it to Capricorn. Hey, they know what to do with it. <sighs> but I don't know where to look. You gotta give me some help. Uh, there's no time. There's a disc by the bookcase that's got information on that winter chip. Don't fail me, Tex. I hope to God you've learned something after all these years. <sighs> I fly the colonel to the hospital and the attendants rush him into surgery but won't tell me what his chances are. I know I should go and search the colonel's office for the disc he referred to but I'm having a hard time keeping my eyelids popped open. I decide to go back to my office for a couple of hours of shut-eye. As I open the door I catch a whiff of expensive perfume then feel my jaw slam into a brick wall. When my vision clears, I'm seated across from a beautiful oriental woman with matching goons on either side of me. Good evening, Mr. Murphy. Please, have a seat. Gee, thanks. My dogs are really tired. Yes, you've been very busy, haven't you? Let me introduce myself. My name is Eddie Ching. Well, I don't believe I've had the pleasure, Miss Ching. That's not totally true, is it? You've had the pleasure of visiting my apartment. I have learned that you were hired to steal a statuette for my apartment. I admire the skill you display in doing so, but I must now ask you to return the bird to me. Life is hard, Ching. 
I was hired to return the statuette to its rightful owner. Unfortunately, someone stole it from me before I could return it to her. It's gone? You imbecile! Have you no idea what you've done? You were set up. The person who hired you belongs to a group so powerful, they may hold the fate of the world in their hands. The statuette is worthless, except to this cult. And I went to great lengths to keep it from them. And all it took was one idiotic P.I. to give these fanatics the talisman they need to lose the demons of hell upon the earth. Oh, please. You really believe all that satanic mumbo-jumbo? You obviously don't understand what I'm saying. With the statuette, the cult will fulfill its prophecies, unleashing an unimaginable flood of destruction. The prophecy is supposed to be fulfilled in six days. If the statuette is not recovered before then, nothing will matter. We'll all be dead. You mean to tell me the world is going to end on Thursday? Damn it! I don't get my unemployment check till Friday. The cult knows about me. They tried several times to steal the statuette once they learned I had it. They will not allow me or my operatives to obstruct their plans. You, however, they do not consider to be a threat. The cult is behind the crusade for genetic purity. I don't know any more than what I've told you, except for the identity of the man who set you up. He is known as the Chameleon. If you can find him, you will be within reach of the statuette. You should realize that your blunder makes you responsible for 10 billion lives. Hope for your own sake that you can succeed where more powerful people cannot. Let this be a reminder to you not to repeat your mistakes. If you fail, I will see you in hell. <gasps> so did he have the chip or not? I never found out. My usual methods of persuasion weren't working. So I had to get a little more forceful. Next thing I know, his lights go out. I think I killed him. Dead men don't help us. We've got to find out about that chip. If the Colonel didn't have the chip, then he probably sent it to Murphy. Stick around and keep tabs on him until the last second. But don't kill him. If the chip doesn't show up, make sure Murphy doesn't blunder into our path. If you find the chip, destroy it. Then you can do what you want with Murphy. Maybe I need a career change. Two days in a row waking up in a semi-conscious stupor is enough for anybody. My nose is so sore my eyes water when I inhale and all my front teeth shift slightly when I exhale. On top of all this, I found out that the world population could be annihilated because of me. That's just too much guilt to heap on a guy at this hour of the morning. Looks like I'm on my own. I'll need to find that disc the Colonel referred to. And what about that Countess? Was she on the level, or was she just feeding me a line? This cabinet is where my old successes go to die. Okay, there's something wrong with this picture. When I was here before, the place looked like a palace. Now it looks like the aftermath of an IRS auction. 
Somebody wanted me to believe the person I talked to was a real countess. Now I can see I've been played for a sucker. But who set me up and why? There's a bald eagle perched on the chandelier. Man. Now that the animal rights lobby is huge, bald eagles are everywhere. <laughs> They're worse than pigeons. Front door was open when I got here. The eagle must have flown in. Looks like it's got a bright cigarette case in its claws. I've heard that eagles are attracted to shiny objects. There's a ball. Looks like an expensive cigarette case. Looks like the obituary section of yesterday's standard examiner. The ashtrays loaded with expensive imported cigarette butts. Whoever that was that met me here the other night may have set me up, but I'll bet you didn't get her cleaning deposit back. Hey, neat. I saw a watch just like this one in my spy supply catalog. Really nice spy watches have things like built-in parachutes. The decorative mantle really sets off the fireplace. It looks like a pile of torn up paper scraps.
Maybe there's more to this watch than meets the eye. What's this? It's a secret compartment. Uh, there's only one cigarette left in the case. Maybe I'll keep it around for a smoking emergency. When I get to the colonel's office, the police are just leaving. They tell me they've combed the place and come up empty. I'm not surprised. As I step inside, I try to remember what the colonel told me. Something about a winter chip and an emergency disc hidden somewhere in the display case. Maybe the info on the disc will tell me something about this chameleon. Sailing is one of the Colonel's two obsessions. The other one can't be mentioned in polite society. Oh. The Colonel keeps this picture hung up so people will assume that he was in the Air Force. Actually, he was in the Coast Guard's elite volleyball unit. Uh, the Colonel's file cabinet. There must be some info in here. Hmm. Locked. I wonder if this is a Grecian urn. Well, it looks like the chameleon didn't have time to smash all the vases. This must be the disc the colonel mentioned. Maybe I can run it on his computer. These desk drawers were probably searched by the chameleon, but maybe he missed something. Some sort of greeting card. These desk drawers were. My PI instincts and keen sense of smell tell me that this envelope was sent by a woman of some kind. Nice computer. Looks like it's all hooked up. Well, the Colonel certainly does like his calendar. Spicy. Nothing's coming up. I'll need to load up a disk before I get any information off this computer. What do you want? I'm a friend of a friend. Look, if you're looking for a date, I don't do that anymore. I have a boyfriend and I'm expecting him any minute. Listen, I hate to be the one to tell you, but I have some bad news for you. 
Someone tried to murder the colonel. I don't know if he's gonna make it. He may be dead now for all I know. The colonel? Dead? I can't believe it! I guess we won't be going to Bermuda next week. I know this must be quite a shock, but I'm trying to find out who wanted him dead, and I could really use your help. Hold on a second. How do I know that you didn't, like, kill the colonel? Well, he's not dead yet. And besides, if I were here to kill you, I'd have done it already. Okay, fine. Then why don't you just, like, leave me alone? I'm very upset. I have something for you from the Colonel. Okay, let's see it. There wasn't any money in it? <laughs> okay, I guess I can answer a few questions. Chameleon? Oh. <laughs> I feel so stupid. The colonel mentioned that name a couple of times, but I thought he was saying he was getting close to getting his hands on, like, a million. Well, he was nice to me, so I was nice to him. I mean, it was fun. I feel kind of bad now, though, because um, he gave me this package that I wasn't supposed to open unless something happened to him, but I opened it anyway. <laughs> And I was so disappointed because there was nothing in it except for this stupid key. No money, no jewels, no nothing. Sure, I guess you can take it. I, I don't even know where I'd use it. Wow, detective files, detective dragnet, unofficial detective. I've never figured out the colonel's tendency toward tawdry smut. A small return receipt from Upex. Apparently the colonel sent something recently. again? You know, I've been thinking, um, I think we could, like, be friends. You know, I think you should stick around and talk to me for a while, because, um, I don't want to be lonely. Normally, I'd pay good money to be friends with you. But right now, I just need to ask you something. Okay, but remember me the next time you got something burning a hole in your pocket. <laughs> Cash, I mean. Oh yeah, I got another dumb letter from the colonel. I mean, there were some, like, numbers and stuff written on a piece of paper inside. You can have it. I can't even understand what it is. The codebook looks like it would come in handy if I could find some coded documents. Uh, 
this could be helpful in decoding the kernel's file. This manila folder looks worth taking. These documents are all in code. Hopefully the colonel's got some sort of decoding manual around here. I couldn't believe it when the name Elena Moore appeared in the Colonel's decoded files. I used to date her sister a few years back. Elena was an annoying 12-year-old who had a knack for entering rooms at the wrong time. It's obvious she still recognizes me when she opens the motel room door. So you're little Allie Moore, huh? Last time I saw you, you were quite a pest. And you'd just gotten your braces put on, right? Yeah, but that was quite a while ago, Tex, when I've grown up. You know... I used to have quite a crush on you. Yeah, I remember. Speaking of crushed, how's your sister? I haven't seen her since our nasty little breakup. She got married a few years ago. In fact, it was Debbie's husband who helped me get hired at GRS. It's been just over a year. Since then, I've worked as Marcus Tucker's personal secretary. He's the director of GRS. So what does GRS do specifically? They do genetic research gene mutations, genetic viruses, that sort of thing. It was very professional, high-tech. GRS hired only the best young scientists. But from the beginning, everything seemed really mysterious and secretive. Is that why you quit? I didn't leave until I started receiving the threatening notes. At first I didn't take them seriously, but they kept coming. I decided to get away and use my vacation time. But when I got back, someone had gone through my apartment. That's when I checked into this motel. How did the colonel find you? I don't know. He just appeared here one day. It took him a while to convince me that I could trust him. But now, for all I know, he's dead. I'm scared, Tex. Really scared. Look, I'll do what I can to help you, but I need to know everything. Why do you think someone at GRS wants you out of the way? I'm not sure. Since I was Mr. Tucker's assistant for a couple years, I had access to most of his files. Maybe someone thinks I saw something I shouldn't have. Well, since you don't work at GRS anymore, why do you think your life's in danger? The last day I came to work, I got a note that said my life was in immediate danger. When I saw that someone had broken into my apartment, I knew that I wouldn't be safe anywhere. Sounds like my next move ought to be to GRS. Can you help me get in? Yes. I still have a pass key to the main doors. You can take it, but please be careful. GRS has a 24-hour security watch. With the colonel in the hospital, I have no one to turn to. 
I don't know if I should, but I'm going to trust you. I tell Elena to sit tight and wait for me till I get back. I also warn her to keep the door locked and not open it for anyone except me. Elena obviously doesn't know anything more than what she's told me. She's given me the break I need, though, a passkey to GRS. Like the Colonel, I have a feeling that GRS will provide a few answers. The GRS office complex is located in the heart of New San Francisco. Elena's passkey gets me into the lobby, which is empty. A directory shows Marcus Tucker's office on the fourth subterranean level. I take the elevator down. Before the doors open, I hear a warning. Attention, lethal security probe on premises. Paul must be a real baseball fan. A hex wrench. I've got an idea this will come in handy. What a cute little TV. I wish I'd found this little sucker a couple of hours ago. Now I've missed all the good soaps. Computer passcard required to access this computer. It's like the TV has no reception capability. It's set up to run only when hooked to a laser disc player. Let's take a look at this thing. Uh, what do we have here? It's like a computer access card. Thank you.
Warning. Security sweep will begin in five seconds. Whoa, what have we here? A computer access card. Poor little guy. He must have tripped something on the console, or maybe the old roast beef sandwich spontaneously combusted. At least he got the door open for me. Looks like a mini disc. Something tells me I have to see whatever's on it. It's a memo. Says memo to Marcus Tucker. This disc was confiscated from Ava Shanzi before she was imprisoned on the Moon Child. We are still searching her personal effects for any sign of the winter chip. Just standard office desks. This looks like it might open one of those office doors. This laser disc is titled, So You're Starting a New Job at GRS, narrated by Marcus Tucker. Warning. Security sweep will begin in five seconds. scratch on the laser disc. I wonder if it still works. This computer card belonged to Ava Shanzi. Maybe I should just take a look at Ava's computer. Computer passcard required to access this computer. Thank you. This computer has a mini disk drive. I've made initial contact with the cult. The colonel's information was right on. There are at least two employees here that are members. I haven't been able to find a solid link between GRS and the cult. 
but I'm sure Tucker knows what's going on. Over the past month, I've been letting people know that I support the eugenics movement. Finally, I was contacted today by a cult member named Murray. He's a project supervisor. I'll be attending an initiating meeting tomorrow night. I've gotten to know one of the young researchers, Paul Dubois. I'm fairly sure he knows nothing about the cult. He told me that Tucker doesn't trust most of his staff and has the project groups working separately. Nine or ten people came to the meeting in Tucker's office. The only ones I knew were Tucker, Murray, and Paul. I got the name of only one other cult member, a creepy little Nazi named Camden Leander. He seemed to be the highest ranking member. I didn't learn much. They seemed more concerned with grilling me and Paul. I don't think Paul is cut out for the cult. I think he's attended the meetings to get to know me. I've advised him to get out while he can. Also, there's a young woman named Elena Moore who works as Tucker's assistant. She doesn't seem to know what's going on here. I think she knows too much and she'll probably be eliminated when the current project is finished. I've warned her to get out of the company. It looks like the project is almost completed. The cult members are ecstatic. I keep hearing them use the words purification and alluvian. I don't know what they mean, but whatever's going to happen is going to happen soon. I'm not going to use a chip until I have a better idea of what they're up to. At our last meeting, there was an older man. He looked familiar, but I couldn't place him. Apparently, he's in charge. I noticed him staring at me during the meetings. Afterwards, he pulled me aside and said there would be a special place for me in the new order. I'm going to play along. Hey, a woman. Barbizon changed my life. I'm surprised this guy didn't pose with his favorite weapon. Well, I hate my job. What I really want to do is sing and dance. Hey, that's the creep that tried to pick me up in a bar a couple of months ago. My whole movies would look great on that screen. There must be a remote control panel that controls this video screen. Maybe it's somewhere on the conference table. Oh, it's an electronic shop laser disc player. Chintzy, but it looks like it works. Ah, oh, another Playbub magazine. Say what you will, but I love the articles. Plastic plants always have that special touch to a room. This panel must control access to the safe. Looks like it's a voice-activated ID system. My guess is that only Marcus Tucker's voice will work on this system.
Hello, I'm Marcus Tucker. I'll need to turn on the access panel first. Plastic plants always have that special touch to a room. These drawers are in need of a good rifling. This drawer got pretty thoroughly cleaned out. These drawers are in need of a good rifling. An old-fashioned red tip wouldn't match. My zippo's out of fluid. Maybe I should keep this around for an emergency light. Warning. Security sweep will begin in five seconds. An old piece of masking tape is stuck here. Looks like some numbers are printed on it. One, four, two, two, three, five. Eh, probably doesn't mean a thing. I'll need to turn on the access panel first. To access the safe, please prepare for voice ID verification. Please speak your name now. Hello, I'm Marcus Tucker. Hello, I'm Marcus Tucker. Hello, I'm Marcus Tucker. Stand by for DNA scan. DNA incompatible. Attention, security intruder on premises.
what's in that vial? It says cigarette viral powder. Viral powder for cigarettes? A cigarette load is a classic practical joke, but this is ridiculous. This type of safe requires a six-digit code to open. If the people who worked here are anything like me, they would have written the code somewhere in case they forgot it. Let's take a look at this Buddha. Whoops. <sighs> so clumsy. Well, I'll be darned. This must be the winter chip. And it was right here under the cult's nose the whole time. 
Maybe there's more to this watch than meets the eye. What's this? It's a secret compartment. That watch's secret compartment may be the safest place for me to hide the winter chip. Ah, the world's most effective stop smoking method. Our special tonight, Lung Dart Flambe. He'll sell no wine before it's time. Nepotism rears its ugly head. Pressures of the corporate world have obviously driven this man to irregularity. Admit it, you can't tell I'm bald. Hey, a key. Must open something here in the room. Cabinet is handcrafted oak, my favorite can. Well, that's not gonna work. Looks like a state of the art VCR. Looks interesting, but I'll need to find a video cassette player. I should turn on the VCR first. Okay, it's turned on now. My whole movies would look great on that screen. There must be a remote control panel that controls this video screen. Maybe it's somewhere on the conference table. Some kind of remote control pad. Probably controls the audio video display. Though not an effective way to infect the mass population, <coughs> the viral powder combined with tobacco <coughs> then inhaled is the quickest way to provoke death. Witness its effects on the traitor Paul Dubois. On a larger scale, the virus can be introduced into the upper atmosphere by means of dispenser satellites. With proper flight path alignment and a minimum of 100 dispensers, Earth's atmosphere could be thoroughly saturated within 12 hours. Once in the atmosphere, the viral molecules bond to condensing moisture and create a seeding effect. The ensuing rainstorms would bring the virus down to the planet's surface. As we have witnessed, the effect of the virus is almost instantaneous and the entire fauna population of the Earth should expire within several days at most. While this method of extermination is thorough, its residual effects are significant. The atmosphere will continue to cycle the virus for years until natural decay and filtering cause the viral strain to become a negligible portion of the atmosphere. 
We estimate that this process will require a minimum of 30 years to complete. Sure, I'm glad to be out of GRS. I'll need to catch a few winks before I go anywhere else. First thing in the morning, I'll need to go back and check on Elena. There's been a change in plans. You and I have a date with destiny. Let's go. It feels like I've been asleep for about 10 seconds when I hear something moving through the office. Hello again, Murphy. Remember me? If not, how about now? The ability to change forms is a talent I was born with. The metamorphosis is difficult to explain, but I've found it quite useful. I haven't had a chance to thank you for your efforts to our cause. You did us a great favor in retrieving the statuette. It was the last key to fulfilling our ancient prophecies. Now we wait until the appointed time. Incidentally, I've kidnapped your girlfriend. I know you're looking for a certain computer chip. Abandon your search now, and I won't harm Miss Moore. It would be a shame to kill her. Besides, it's not easy stuffing a head into one of those water coolers. Just ask your friend Pug. He's cooling off right now. I tried for an hour to get Pug's head out of the water cooler, but it was no dice. The police showed up and thought about grilling me until they realized Pug was a mutant, and it was like they couldn't care less. That's the trouble with this world. A life's still alive, whether it's mine or Pug's, it still has to count for something. If a crime to humanity is committed, someone should have to pay for it. The chameleon had killed Pug for no good reason and had kidnapped Elena. I'm not about to let him get away with it. Not today. I heard that some rich guy a few years back bought the remaining pieces of an ancient European castle. This must be the place. As I approach the coordinates given in the shredded note from GRS, I see a massive structure jutting out from a deeply forested area. The bastion looks like a medieval castle, but there's nothing romantic about this place. It seems to lay there, a festering evil, like a paper cut gone bad. 
here I can get a good look at the chameleon. He's pacing around, smoking like a brush fire and talking to himself. I don't know what he's smoking, but he looks higher than an infield fly. I've got to distract him somehow and get him out of the room. Then I'll figure out a way to get him out of here for good. That roaring fire makes me wish I'd brought fixins for some oars. It's the chameleon. Looks like he's enjoying his rich imported cigarette. Maybe I can get him to stop smoking permanently. First I'll have to create some sort of a smoke screen to get him out of the main room. The chameleon has Elena in a laser field. The effect of the beam is probably keeping her sedated. With the chameleon out of the way, I can find out how to shut it off. Well, any cult that worships sea monkeys can't be all bad. I don't want to know what the chameleon uses this bee clamp for. Two antique knives. I'll bet Rook wouldn't mind capturing these. These weapons would be really useful if someone hadn't bolted them to the wall. This gargoyle's only got one eye, and it looks removable. Well, I'll be darned. That's Uncle Morty, and he was not a handsome man. This gemstone's small, but it's very dense and heavy. That's an odd place for a vase. I wonder if I could use it as a distraction. Well, any cult that worships sea monkeys can't be all bad. Looks like a perfectly harmless bungee cord. It's probably used by the cult as some kind of diabolical torture device. This door appears to be sealed shut. I guess I'll need to look somewhere else. Okay, the cigarette's in place. Now if you'll just go for it. Yeah, here he comes. Come on. Come on. Over to the table for some real smoking enjoyment. He's got it. That's it. Smoke away, sucker. Gotcha.
Didn't anyone ever tell you these things can kill you? I underestimated you, Murphy. <clears throat> Viral powder in my cigarette. Very clever. <clears throat> You're a worthy opponent. You know, I think the world would be a much nicer place without people like you. People who go around stuffing other people's heads into water coolers. But you've accomplished nothing. <clears throat> Except now. I'll be a martyr in the new order. And you'll die with all the other vermin in the great Luvia. And when the earth has returned to a state of perfection, and the purified races return after the waiting, my name will live forever. Yeah, I guess that's good in theory. Too bad you won't be around to enjoy it. Death means nothing. I would die a thousand times to help fulfill the sacred prophecy. Enjoy your victory while you can, Murphy. Tomorrow night, you will die. I caught a lucky break getting rid of the chameleon this easy. Death is always an ugly business, but if anyone deserved it, he did. Now I've got to get Elena out of the force field. Mmm, bread, milk, taco sauce, damn! I know I'm forgetting something. I won't be needing this ashtray. This whole incident has almost convinced me to stop smoking. Chameleon has Elena in a laser field. The effect of the beam is probably keeping her sedated. With the chameleon out of the way, I can find out how to shut it off. A shield. Reminds me of my deodorant soap. Being a man doesn't mean you have to smell like one. I've always enjoyed flipping switches. Especially when I'm not absolutely certain what the switch does. Tex! I knew you'd come! That... that monster came to the motel. He looked just like you. So I opened the door. He must have knocked me out. It was terrible, the things he said to me. Oh, Tex, hold me! Kiss me! Listen, Elena, I'd love to kiss you, but I just had a big chili dog with uh, <clears throat> extra onions. Besides, every time I look at you, I can't help but think of your sister, and that gives me a stomach ache. But Tex, I... I think I'm in love with you. Well, that's nice of you to say. But I'm pretty sure you got your family's genes and it just wouldn't work out. Are you sure there's nothing I can do to make you stay? Hmm... Do you play Twisty? Ah, never mind. Look, don't get me wrong, Elena. I think you're as, as cute as a button. But right now, I got a job to do, and I've got to do it alone. Unless I stop the cult from executing their plan, we're all gonna be toast. Men worth having are always running off. Maybe it wouldn't work out for us anyway. 
If they don't kill you, let me buy you a drink. I owe you a big one. Look, Elena, you don't owe me a thing. But maybe you could help me, because what I really need right now is a good lead. The Chameleon said that he was supposed to meet up with someone named Feral Puss at a place called the Broken Skull. Does that help? Yeah, it does, as a matter of fact. He summoned to his presence a thousand hale and light-hearted friends to the deep seclusion of one of his castellated abbeys. This was an extensive and magnificent structure, the creation of the prince's own eccentric yet august taste. A strong and lofty wall girdled it in. Without was the Red Death. Is that the final group? Yes, brother. Everyone has arrived. And all the provisions are stored. What about the wine? We hadn't received the shipment when I last checked the inventory. All is in order, brother. We have sufficient supplies to take us into the next century. Excellent. I will notify the master that everything is prepared. The celebration is set to begin at the appointed hour. The way station is small, with a diameter of maybe 5,000 meters. I have no problem finding the Broken Skull, which turns out to be a typical off-world saloon. The kind of place where all the booze is watered down, the prices are tripled, and the waitresses all have fresh stitches on their foreheads. It's strangely quiet, though, and the dame behind the bar looks like she just as soon cut my throat as pour me a drink. So what do you have? Give me four fingers of rye whiskey. Neat. You know, we don't take American Express. Cash customers only. You take uh, out-of-state cash? We'll take any cash with the Made in the USA logo on it. That's not mince words. I'll give you a C-note for some information. Put your money where your mouth is, Rockefeller. Okay, money bags. One question. Can you help me find a ride to the moon child? Do you have the token? Let me check. No, I must be in my other overcoat. Look, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I mean, maybe you're one of us and maybe you're just an idiot. Go find your token. If you come back here without it, don't plan on leaving. Did you forget something? Sorry, I don't know about that. The chameleon said something about using an old silver dollar as a token.
What now, Murphy? Yeah, I've got a couple of old Susan B. Anthony silver dollars in my coin collection. They're pretty expensive, though I guess I do owe you something. Did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, it went through the wash, but I think it'll work. Well, let's see it. I haven't got all day. Okay, okay. Go knock on that door and say, Jax or better. The man you need to see is in there. I walk down a hall and look at the name tag on the door. Barrel Puff. Must be a charming guy. I call out the password and a gravelly grating voice calls loudly for me to come in. As I step into the back room, I'm blasted by an aromantic wave of cigar smoke, alcohol, fish, and body sweat. The combination almost knocks me out. The room is empty except for a bloated hog of a man who seems to be the source of all the foul odors. I ain't seen you here before. Who the hell are you? I'm a friend of the chameleon. He told me to come here and look for a fat pig named Puss. Well, I guess you found him. Have a sit down, Tex. You know, Mr. Puss, it's not only rude, but it's also illegal to point a Lester flame rod at a total stranger. Ha <laughs> ha, you're not a total stranger. I've been waiting for you for a while now. Though I thought you was gonna come up with that chameleon. So, you're disappointed the chameleon isn't here, huh? Why? Was he your girlfriend? Hell, I oughta blow your head off right now! But I ain't gonna. I like watching you sweat. You know, I bet you do. Probably makes your own body odor less noticeable. Watch your mouth, boy, or I'll blow your damn head off! My boss told me that when you got here, I should take care of you. Now sit down! Well, great. I'd like a Mai Tai with two umbrellas and a nice plate of those cocktail weenies. I don't think so. I think you wanted me to slit your throat. But there ain't no sport in that. So I'm going to give you a chance to beat the odds. <laughs> oh, I've beaten a few odds in my time. I'll guarantee you haven't beaten this. I call it the ferrolette table. Three of them balls are hollow, and there's a spy drone in each one. They're little robotic arachnids with nasty stingers. <laughs> well, dare I ask what's in the fourth ball? Inside that one is part of a ticket to the moon child. I'll mix them around. Then you just have to pick the ball with the ticket and open it up. Do that four times, and I'll take you to the moon child. Sounds like the old shell game to me. Close enough. Here's the ball with the ticket. Let's play. Okay, pick a ball. Any ball. Beginner's luck. Let's see how you do this time. Damn it! I guess I need to speed up the balls a little bit. Well, third time's the charm. For me. <laughs> A 
Lucky today, aren't we? I can't wait to see a spy drone tear your head off. No one's gotten this far before, Murphy. It'd be a real shame if you screwed up now. you, Murphy! I wanted to see you die! But we did make a deal. I'm taking a few people up to the moon, child, in a couple of hours. You can go with us. <clears throat> I have some business to take care of. Wait at the bar until we leave. Drinks are on me. Be sure to ask for the house special. It's my favorite. Sit down, brother. Have a drink. It's on the house. Thanks. Make it bourbon neat. So, when we leaving? Oh, it won't be long now. The purification will be tomorrow at midnight. Yeah, sounds like fun. By the way, Farrell told me to ask about the house special. Oh, really? Well, uh... Farrell's always been partial to the house special. Here you go. Hmm. This ought to hit the spot. Are you gonna join me? Oh, no, it's a little strong for me. It's a man's drink. So, you're Tex Murphy. Well, we're gonna make your trip as comfortable as possible. <laughs> Nighty night! <laughs> The figure was tall and gaunt, and in the costume and bearing of the stranger, neither wit nor propriety existed. There are chords in the hearts of the most reckless, which cannot be touched without emotion. Even with the utterly lost, to whom life and death are equally jests, there are matters of which no jest can be made. I must have died and gone to heaven. Except I don't think people in heaven have raging hangovers. I must be on the moon, child. I have to admit, it is incredible. I could get used to living in a place like this. I've never seen anything so beautiful. What's that sound? Something's coming this way. Wake up, Mr. Murphy. We'll have no sleeping through the greatest event in the history of the world. I'm so glad you could join us on this sacred day. Maybe you don't recognize me. It has been some time. Lowell Percival, at your service. You did a job for me on Mars a few years back. Cleverness, tenacity, both then and now, have shown me that you belong here. In fact, I need to thank you for securing the statuette for us. The flawless crystal and the symbolic purity of the dove are the foundation of our beliefs. Our sacred text has said that our destiny would be secure only if we had the statuette in our possession. We are deeply in your debt. In an hour or so, we will fulfill an ancient prophecy Specifically, the purification by means of the Great Alluvian. It is a fabulous name for a somewhat nasty process.
Those creative minds at GRS worked extra hard for a long time to make our prophecy a reality. It was quite a challenge to come up with a plan that would match the details of the great alluvian as it is described in our sacred text. It cost me a fortune. Now everything's prepared. At midnight, I will become the savior of our dying world. The Earth has become a rotting shell, inhabited by a mongrel breed of half-humans that infest the pure races with their filthy, mutated genes. Is that to be the fate of mankind? The Earth must be thoroughly cleansed for mankind to be saved. Soon, we'll release the seeds of purification. The great alluvian, the baptism of fire, which follows will destroy all life on earth. But from the ashes will arise a glorious new age. In keeping with the sacred prophecies, we'll wait 40 years here on the moon child. Then our genetically pure children will return to a world that, like them, is clean and unspoiled. Though I may not live to see it, I will die peacefully, knowing that I have given mankind a purified world. I designed this moon child to be the Ark of Humanity, but it is also a splendid place to spend the next 40 years. We have it all here, aquariums, aviaries, zoos with animals of all kinds, forests, rivers, mountains, nightclubs. Ballparks, everything you could ever want. And the people, only the creme de la creme. Architects, bankers, doctors, artists, musicians, and the former president. And as for the women, they're all beautiful, intelligent, accomplished. One thousand men, women, and children, all bound together by belief and purpose. A desire to create a world free of imperfections, a society of harmony, peace, without fear, without crime. Share in our dream, Mr. Murphy. You have less than an hour to decide. I can't allow you to attend the big purification party, but I'll be down to see you right after. I'm sure you'll agree that your options are limited. So, Lowell Percival is behind all this. His offer is tempting. It sounds like paradise. And there's probably no way to stop the cult now, so maybe I should just make the best of it. Hold on, Murphy. Don't forget what they've got in mind. They intend to wipe out every person that doesn't happen to meet their standards. I wouldn't last very long in a club like this. I could never be part of their brotherhood. I've got to find a way to stop them, but I'm gonna need some help. If Ashanzi is still alive and I can find her, the two of us might be able to figure something out. Maybe it's too late, but I've got to do something. I looked through the pockets of my overcoat, but they've taken everything. All I've got left is the watch I found at the Countess Mansion. Could be a lot worse, though. At least they didn't find the winter chip. Looks like someone didn't get around to picking up this pile of leaves. Groundskeepers must belong to a union. Well, if I'm not mistaken, that's a Puff Buster smoke detector. This must be the way out, and I can hear someone pacing from the other side. Probably the security guard. Too bad someone already gathered up all the leaves in here. This rock looks like it may actually be a piece of flint. This piece of flint takes me back to my days as a tenderfoot scout. 
We spent hours trying to start a fire so we could heat up our beans and weenies. This is a rugged John Stag harvester rake. It's very solid and heavy. This door looks too accessible to be an exit. Oh, a bottle of lighting fluid. These cult members must like to barbecue. Hmm, this piece of rock looks like it's come loose from the mortar. Nice piece of stone. Smooth, shiny, and fits snugly in the palm of my hand. High octane lighter fluid in the point and squirt container. Very convenient. What an idiot! Oh! The floor looks like it's made of metal grating. Sounds like the purification party is going on somewhere behind this door. Looks like someone laid a piece of pipe here. stasis room. Maybe I'll find Sleeping Beauty in there. As I enter the stasis room, I feel like I've stepped into a fairy tale. I'm no Prince Charming, but there's a Sleeping Beauty lying peacefully in a cryonic chamber. It's Ava Shanzi. Boy, do I need to talk to her. As I look around, I spot a console nearby. Looking it over, I figure it must be used to control the cryonic sleep state. If I can resuscitate Ava, maybe we can still stop the cult. I've seen consoles like this before. The four buttons along the top must administer injections. The two slider controls look like they regulate the air temperature and oxygen level inside the cryonic tube. 
I seem to remember that slider mechanisms like these are really sensitive and need to be moved slowly. Well, first things first. I'll need to turn this thing on. Aha! A red light went off in one of those phase one boxes. I must have done something right. Now I've got to get those other boxes to light up. Hmm. That yellow warning light doesn't look good. Maybe I should wait a few seconds and see if it goes off before I try anything else. So, is it all over? Are your prophecies taken care of? Look, prophecies aren't in my job description, okay? I'm just a humble P.I. trying to save the world as we know it. Well, if you're not in the cult, then what are you doing here? Look, I think we're running out of time here, but my name's Tex Murphy. I know you're Ava Shanzi because I followed your trail from the Colonel to GRS to up here. So why don't you tell me how you ended up getting freeze-dried? Percival has a thing for me, so he decided not to have me killed. Instead, he put me into stasis to keep me out of the way until after the purification. Well, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is the purification won't start for about 45 minutes. The bad news is we've only got 45 minutes to stop these people. Luckily, I've got the winner chip, but you need to tell me how to use it. Well, how did you get it? Listen, there's no time for explanations now. We have to hurry. Take this. There are instructions on what to do with the winter chip. When you get into position, wait for my signal. In exactly 30 minutes, I'm going to create a power surge. That will give us our last chance to stop the cult. That note also has instructions on how to reach the escape pods. I'll wait until the last second, but hurry. And listen, Murphy, good luck. If we get out of here, you can tell me your story.
So, this is the door to the observatory. Sounds like a place worth looking into. The floor looks like it's made of solid marble. Those asteroids look like they're following the Moonchild around like big stone puppies. Hmm, a cocktail glass with a ceramic flex straw. What a great tree. If I get off this godforsaken pleasure satellite, I'm taking it with me. It'd look great in my office. What a great tree. What a great tree. This floor panel looks like it's removable. I'll need something to pry it up with. This floor panel looks like it's re- Looks like one of these computer cables ought to do the trick. The cocktail glass is worthless, but I love flex straws. Looks like some sort of croquet software. Aha! This must be the mini computer. Percival's gonna wish he hadn't let me be in charge of the purification party fireworks. This looks like an old-fashioned telephone jack. No, it's a recessed button. I'll need something to reach in. Well, that's not gonna work. Ha! Ah, this panel should give me access to the Moonchild's main computer. Hold on, everybody, because it's going to be a bumpy ride. It's been almost 30 minutes. If they didn't find Ava, she should be creating a power surge any second. That'll give me time to patch the mini-computer into the Moonchild main computer. <laughs> now I've got to get to the engineering corridors. And fast. I've got a system warning on level 18, section J. I'm attempting to override that. Uh, now I'm showing a temporary system failure. Climate control is down on levels 4 through 18. Winter sequence engaged. I don't understand it. The whole system's going haywire. Five minutes to self-destruct. Shut it down and I can't do a damn thing about it. Damn it! Malfunction has initiated the self-destruct sequence. 
Download the backup system. He had come like a thief in the night, and one by one dropped the revelers, and died each in the despairing posture of his fall. And darkness, and decay, and death held illimitable dominion over all. Some good work, Tex. I guess you didn't forget everything I taught you. Maybe it's not too late I could make a real detective out of you. Uh, I don't know. This saving the world business doesn't pay so well. My cousin Vinny says he can cut me in on some Amway action. That's a load of hooey. You got it in your blood, Tex. You'd gum chew for pocket change. Hey, pocket change would be a step up for me. Well, you know, I've done pretty well over the past few years. Put a few greenbacks away. But I'm not so young as I used to be. Maybe we could work out an arrangement. Eh? I'll be the brains, you be the legs. A lot of work out there for somebody with your skills. What do you say? Partners? Hmm. Nah. Ava. Hey, I was hoping I'd see you around. Oh, hi, Tex. Hello, handsome. Long time no see. Look good as ever. What have you been up to? Nothing much. <laughs> Say, uh, tell me, have you still got that Twister game? I do. But I haven't played it in a long time. Listen, Tex, something's popped up. I think I found a partner to do undercover work with. I'll see you around. So here I am, back where I started. Lonely, broke, and late for an appointment back in my office. Okay, so maybe it's not a perfect world. Maybe there are more glamorous ways to spend Saturday night than teaching cha-cha lessons to lonely women like Dolores Lightbody. At least she's a regular client and it seems to make her happy. And she always pays me up front, in cash. Now that I think about it, things are better. I cleared up my bar tab with Louie, and I did solve the pawn shop burglary for Rook. Yeah, once word gets around, I'll be up to my neck in good paying jobs. Uh, looks like Murphy pulled it off, sir. Yes, but next time, he may not be so fortunate. Next time, sir? The forces of darkness sleep but do not die. Even now, I sense evil stirring. An evil about to re-enter the life of our friend Murphy. Tex, honey! Long time no see. Forgive me? Take one. 
action. So you're Tex Murphy. Ah, well, we're gonna make your trip as comfortable as possible. Nighty night. <laughs> You don't shoot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. <laughs> Let's just. I, I can never understand that logic in directing. <laughs> Perfect. That's the best I've ever seen. Let's do it one more time. Um, on the. Uh... did some good work, Tex. I guess you didn't forget everything I taught you. Maybe it's not too late I can make a real detective out of you. <laughs> That's terrible shit. 